Hello everyone and welcome to 12th uh, lecture of uh, digital elevation models and application course and uh, this is uh, DM's derivatives too. So, more derivatives which we can drive using digital elevation models especially on JR's platforms and uh, we will be discussing focusing on that. So, first we take here is the, uh, the profile or longitudinal section also called cross section elevation profile topographic profile in literature or in various software different terms are being used, but a, a, a simply say a, a topographic profile which I would like to call as that it shows the elevation as a function of distance along the profile route. Why route instead of a line has been used here? Because it is possible to create a topographic profile not only along a straight line. Uh, but along a polyline or an arbitrary line. For example, uh, uh, you can create a topographic profile along a drainage line generally which is a arbitrary line or pro, uh, polyline. So, topographic profile along a straight line uh, which is very easy to create even using uh, your contours uh, from a topographic map can also be used to create a topographic profile along a uh, straight line, but creating a topographic profile along a, an arbitrary line as mentioned is uh, possible uh, using DMs in GIS platform. And uh, this is the example which is here that uh, a line has been drawn over a example DM which we have been taken in this course as but example DM and when we uh, uh, put a line here and uh, so a profile is immediately drawn here. The example is we are from arc uh, GIS arc map and uh, along all these nodes here it is shown that we can uh, know what exact the elevation values are. So, it becomes very handy uh, for use them you can change this uh, length of the axis y axis or x axis and accordingly or you can export these things save as a uh, excel file and can do all other things. Profile data can also be uh, taken from this that what is the 2D length that is the length of this line, what is this 3D length that is means including all undulations. Uh, recall the discussion on uh, this uh, planimetric area and surface area. So, the 3D length is always going to be more than 2D length, then all um, what is the Z minimum, what is the Z maximum and all kinds of values can be calculated uh, along a, a straight line. Similarly, we can also calculate along an arbitrary line like here. So, we are having a arbitrary line here and uh, this is an example from older version of uh, ArcView, ArcView GIS 3.2a in which a extension has been used profile extractor and uh, a line has been selected along a drainage line which is shown here as a green line and the profile can be derived here. This can be again exported and uh, you can uh, use further for many other analysis. So, profile uh, this one is very very useful drawing a profile a longitudinal profile or topographic profile either along a line that is a straight line or a polyline that is arbitrary line. Now, this uh, uh, these things uh, characterizes basically the micro terrain features. And this is what uh, uh, we want to exploit uh, whenever we want to see what are the undulations along a say drainage line or a stream uh, or these micro terrain features uh, we can use these uh, uh, profile tools or can drive profiles like this. So, uh, here uh, what is this is a smooth uh, elevation is a generalized elevation is like this but uh, then you are having at places somewhere the convex features which is above a smooth elevation we may be having some concave features that is the below smooth surface and uh, that uh, black line shows the topographic profile or elevation profile. So, this is useful uh, to identify micro terrain features involving uh, subtracting a smoothed elevation surface that is the average elevation surface from a actual elevation surface and this can uh, give you the uh, basically surface roughness or micro terrain features along a line or a polyline and uh, uh, that may be useful for various purposes. 
again uh, these are the localized deviations and that is what we see here that this uh, concave features and uh, this is how we get the minus values here in case of convex features we will get the positive value. So, this uh, for identifying and uh, this micro terrain features subtract the elevation values at a location from the aver uh, average of its surrounding elevation values and a positive derivation deviation values indicates the convex features and uh, like here and uh, whereas negative indicates the concave features like here and the magnitude of the deviation indicates the relative height or depth of the micro trident feature. So, this is how along a topographic profile we can see or drive the micro terrain features and uh, this is these are useful in route alignments these are useful in uh, uh, for uh, uh, finding out the rapids or uh, undulations or uh, you know uh, sudden changes in the elevations along a uh, drainage or any other uh, polyline. Uh, so, like in this example this is the start uh, of a line this is the end of a line in between you are having uh, these locations for bit uh, points are there and this is depicted in a top, uh, topographic profile start end and in between these number of uh, points are there. So, this is a uh, planimetric length is given here and uh, this is going to be less than the surface length as we see and all these points uh, we know that uh, as actual elevation which is this red one and uh, the smooth head one is here and we can find out where uh, uh, the fl flow uh, will become faster or slower where are the rapids or falls or where are uh, it is a smooth flow uh, because uh, these uh, and such information can be useful uh, while designing a civil structure uh, across a or along a uh, drainage line or a stream because uh, 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 in in like in civil engineering we want that uh, flow should be laminar flow rather than turbulent flow. So, if you are having micro terrain features uh, abundant micro uh, terrain features uh, along a uh, stream uh, then uh, uh, then these should be avoided uh, for uh, uh, while designing uh, or finding out a suitable site for such structures maybe bridge piles of bridge and other things. Now, applications of uh, topographic uh, profile as just indicated that the surface roughness along a line can be explored which is useful for various purposes provides information about micro terrain features again along a line very useful for geological cross sections in structure geology we draw geological cross sections generally and the practice is that we draw along a straight line, but nowadays it is possible to draw geological sections along a arbitrary line or polyline. And topographic profile along a drainage line can provide information about rapids, falls etcetera as discussed earlier and these falls can provide preliminary information about feasibility of a small hydro sites as well. Whether a fall is <coughs> available or not or a head is available and so this rapids or fall can uh, give us that kind of indication. Now, uh, next thing which we go uh, and calculate one of the derivatives of calculating the volume and uh, that volume is useful in cut and fill analysis. So, we set a, a label or plane and then we, we would like to find out of a undulating terrain that how much of the earth or soil or rocks have to be removed uh, below the uh, above the reference surface and how much uh, uh, you know filling would be required uh, below the reference surface. So, this uh, calculates the surface volume area and volume of region between a surface and a reference plane. So, here this is the reference plane if we say that we want to uh, fill all this. So, the here the reference plane is uh, is set to the above and plane height location intersect with the surface and here is uh, below what is below uh, what is uh, below here and if we have to say make it this flat then this much area has to be removed and uh, similarly if we have to uh, fill it and make it flat then this much area has to be filled. Likewise this uh, cut and fill analysis can be uh, done using uh, digital elevation models and very very useful 
in uh, uh, like a, if we have decided along a topographic profile a route alignment maybe for a road or railway track then next thing we would like to know that how much filling would be required or how much uh, cutting would be required or removal of soil or earth or rocks would be required because uh, a particular slope is a, a part of the design and that has to be maintained and therefore uh, the reference slope or reference level is uh, uh, first decided and accordingly then this cut and fill analysis can be done. So, cut and fill analysis basically is a procedure in which the elevation of a uh, landform surface is modified by removal or addition of surface material. Generally one uh, uh, the good uh, uh, analysis uh, can be if it is possible to choose a reference plane in such a manner that uh, the material which is be, uh, to in order to make a terrain flat uh, or part of the terrain flat uh, the reference plane should be chosen in a such a manner that uh, there should be a minimum and, and, and minimum cutting and minimum filling is required means that less earthwork if it is possible to shift the reference plane. But if it is not then whatever is required it can be analyzed. So, in, in cut and fend analysis the areas and volumes of changes are summarized and uh, like here in a, this is schematic that uh, if I have decided that this is my reference plane where a road has to go. So, and uh, then this much area has to be uh, cut and uh, this much volume of rocks or soils will be removed and uh, these are the areas where it would be filled, may be filled. So, likewise and therefore, this road will become uh, relatively quite a smooth. So, the basic calculation basically is the difference between the desired elevation here in this case is the black line and the original elevation which is the brown line. And the red areas here are showing the areas which would be filled filled with the with the material which may be removed from here or here. So they, this is in the section. But think what what happen in a plan view. This is a longitudinal view. In plan view, it is something like this: that if uh, this is the area which has to be made flat, which is marked by a polygon, then these are the areas. Uh, which are being shown here and uh, the green one uh, which will be cut and these are the areas where filling will be done if a elevation level is uh, decided here. So, uh, like marked area for cut and fill analysis along uh, the perimeter along this whole area can be seen here and uh, this is what this is the reference surface and in this example is a uh, given around uh, uh, Mm, and, uh, and the, some value and once the reference surface is given then uh, you know exactly where things will be cut and where things will be for, uh, uh, removed or deposit, uh, deposited and the total volume not only uh, the location but the volume of earthwork uh, which is required uh, can also be estimated quite easily. Now, the accuracy of uh, this analysis that is cut and fill analysis especially the volume uh, will definitely depend on the spatial resolution of digital elevation model. So, if it is being done for a small area then high, high, higher spatial resolution digital elevation model would be required, but it is if it is done for a very large area then uh, maybe a relatively moderate spatial resolution DM can serve the purpose. For very accurate uh, definitely uh, a high spatial and accurate digital elevation model is required. In this particular example the, ana uh, the analysis shows that this is the volume of uh, fill or earthwork is required where things will be filled. This is the volume uh, the, um, of soil or rocks would be cut and uh, this much would be the areas in both the cases and this is the perimeter is going to be affected and the elevation or the reference surface in this example was chosen as 1600 meter. So, depending on the terrain, depending on the requirement whether uh, this analysis can also be done for a sloping surface. In these examples what we are thinking only about a uh, flat reference surface, but in some cases a sloping surface may be involved. So, accordingly the analysis can also be performed. Now, here again as we have discussed the jet factor in case of slope and aspect. 
so in case of uh, uh, this uh, profile and uh, especially in the volume calculations the jet factor will play a very important role jet factor basically uh, it is uh, uh, about uh, how much uh, uh, because two scales are or two resolutions are there uh, so x y or horizontal scale is there there is a vertical scale and uh, these two are generally different in digital elevation models except if you are working in a utm projection where everything in meters that means horizontal scale and vertical scale both are in meters but if somebody is working in dd or in some map projections then jet factor has to be set accordingly uh, otherwise the entire calculation may go completely wrong remember this uh, most in most of the gis software the jet factor as default is set one and one means that uh, horizontal axis and uh, or horizontal scale and vertical scale are same but generally as i have mentioned except in case of utm these are not same so jet factor uh, must be taken care the jet factor ensures the accuracy of volume calculations when the uh, surface jet values are expressed in a different units of measure than x y units so vertical uh, x vertical scale and a horizontal scale when are they are different then accordingly the jet factor should be set the output text file uh, uh, through this cut and fill analysis will store the full path to the surface the perimeter used to generate results and the calculated area and volume measurements so like in previous example uh, which i have shown here these are in mapping units these values which you are getting all are in mapping units if they are in meters everything in meters like in utm then it is very easy to uh, calculate but if they are not then accordingly um, the uh, the jet factor should have been chosen and accordingly you will get the value so values will come through all these analysis in mapping units so map in case of U, uh, utm mapping units are uh, meters in case of a like non projection when values are in dd or degree decimal and the the if the same output file is specified in multiple runs of the tool the pre existing records are maintained and the results are appended to the table so you keep analyzing and then later on uh, you can choose the which one uh, here is the example of cut and fill analysis results in arcgis like here uh, that uh, the tin example is here raster example and other the plane Uh, plane height is given differently the reference plane is either above or below the jet factor is changed accordingly and uh, here in jet factor 1 that means the horizontal axis and vertical axis are same area in 2d is coming like this 3d is coming like this and volume is like this and uh, of course for uh, this one uh, all these three will be uh, zero uh, because it is below and the above again you are having when plane height is chosen 1250 then uh, things will change the area in 2d will change 3d will change and so on and so forth so likewise uh, if reference plane is change values will change if a jet factor is change values will change so these things have been depicted here by taking surfaces of a uh, given location at two different time periods like instead of a uh, Uh, you might be having two digital elevation models representing two different uh, times maybe 10 years time difference or so on so forth then you can know many other things also so this is the example here that the taking difference of a given location at two different time periods it identifies reasons of surface material removal addition and areas where the surface has not changed so in a in case of a large project after a uh, few days of work or few months of work one would like to assess that how much work has been achieved really so that uh, if we are having a high resolution digital elevation model before work is started and in middle of the work then uh, then we are having that means two elevation difference uh, two elevation models and there is a time difference then therefore we can calculate where the uh, more removal or more addition Uh, is required or where things have not changed for example here this is the original state say in the year 1980 this is the scenario in 1990 and then 
uh, we can create a 10 years time difference uh, surfaces. So, here th erosion or uh, out or removal has taken place, here deposition has taken place. So, likewise uh, uh, we can we can assess uh, that means bringing a time uh, factor here and uh, instead of going just for 3D, now we are going for uh, fourth dimensional and involving in our uh, volume analysis the time domain or uh, fourth dimension as well. So, they, uh, if, if at all we are having two different uh, digital elevation models, maybe of same resolution, but belonging to two uh, different timings of the same area, then such kind of calculations uh, can be done. It is now possible because when we drive digital elevation models using uh, SAR interferometry and in between some episode like maybe a flooding or maybe a earthquake might have occurred. So, if we are having say 2 years, 5 years time difference between two digital elevation models derived from SAR interferometry using radar data, then how much land has changed, where erosion or uh, subsidence has taken place, where exactly uh, uh, upliftment has taken place. Uh, the, this uh, cut and volume kind of analysis can also be performed where time and domain or time component has also been incorporated. But the prerequisite here that we should have at least two surfaces uh, belonging to two different timings. Now, here uh, that uh, how it is exactly calculated that uh, like uh, this is the uh, before raster and uh, the raster before an event has taken place and uh, this is after the event has taken place. So, now only the uh, difference which we are looking and it tells uh, the this is how things have changed here. And uh, likewise uh, here the out raster this one will uh, be some uh, uh, subjected to cut and fill these two surfaces. So, in, in this case what happens basically one surface becomes your reference surface. So, the earlier one the first one before raster becomes the reference surface and the after raster uh, becomes your uh, the target surface and accordingly the calculations can be done. So, from uh, cut and fill analysis point of view is uh, no, uh, immaterial, but only thing in, no, in conventional cut and fill analysis generally we take reference surface is a flat. But in this change detection analysis, we are taking two different digital elevation models. So, that is the major difference here. When the cut and fill operation is performed, by default, a specialized render is applied to the layer that highlights the locations of cut and fill analysis. And uh, likewise, here we may get the minus values, we may get the positive value. So, we know that uh, these are the areas where a net gain has to be, that means the, it will be filled, these are the areas which uh, which has uh, the things will be uh, removed or uh, loss is shown here. So, likewise such analysis can be performed. So, this determinant is in the attribute table of the output raster and uh, which considered positive vol uh, volume and uh, to be uh, uh, volume to where the material was cut or removed or where negative values where it has been added or filled. So, likewise it can be done. Now, what are the applications few uh, while discussing this uh, cut and fill analysis or before that uh, the topographic profiles, we have discussed some applications, but for completeness we will go one by one that with the cut and fill analysis the following uh, things can be that uh, we can identify regions of sediment erosion and deposition in a river valley uh, uh, which may be very helpful in case of erosional studies or uh, some other studies as well. Calculate the volumes and areas of surface material to be removed or areas to be filled around a mining site, maybe along a road, maybe for a railway track, maybe for a highway and uh, so on and so forth. So, this is uh, very, very useful and I, we can uh, using this cut and fit analysis, we can identify areas that become uh, frequently inundated. That means, uh, for flooding also. Uh, cut and fill analysis because the one example I have shown where a reference surface was chosen uh, and, and uh, you assume that uh, this is the filling surface and that filling surface may be uh, because of water. So, if we set a level for water 
that inundated areas can also be identified and during a might be a mudslide in a study to locate safe areas for a stable land or maybe simple flooding where instead of mud we are having the water. Cut and fill analysis can also create maps based on input surfaces before and after that means for change detection studies displaying the areas and volumes of surface material that have been modified by the removal or addition of surface material. Cut and fill also uh, can uh, in this case the input raster surface must be considered that means they both uh, should belong to the exactly of same area and probably of same resolution then we get the better results accurate results and uh, that is they must have a common origin. And uh, this is uh, uh, very easily can be done in, in a GIS platform. And uh, for accurate results as I have mentioned the Z factor or Z units should be uh, same as X, Y units. So, Z factor has to be uh, taken care otherwise all results may go completely wrong. And uh, if they are not same like uh, a horizontal axis and vertical axis then Z factor has to play a major role. Example here is if the X, Y units are in meters and Z units are in feet you could specify a Z factor of this one or maybe Z, factor, Z units might be in degree decimal then it becomes a further a very small value. So, likewise uh, we can employ uh, all the cut and fill analysis for various purposes and uh, this attribute table which will, uh, which will be generated through this cut and fill analysis uh, can present the changes in the surface volume following the cut and fill operation. Positive values will indicate the volume difference indicate the reason before uh, that raster surface or a reference surface and have been cut that is the material removed. Negative values will indicate where the filling is uh, required and when cut and fill is performed uh, from um, uh, you know on a GIS platform. Uh, default uh, render is applied and uh, that is the uh, basically which will highlight the location of uh, cut and fill as we have seen in few examples and uh, this uh, can be and uh, uh, this can be very helpful. The render draws areas that have cut in blue and that area may be in. So, the color schemes depend on uh, different softwares, but generally red is uh, maybe for cut or maybe for fill and accordingly and uh, the other color would be. The area that have not changed are displayed generally in gray color or maybe in white colors. So, as, uh, as uh, mentioned that in uh, soil work, earth work, uh, rock works, uh, the cut and fill is the process of constructing a railway, road or canal whereby the amount of material from its cut roughly matches the amount of fill needed to make nearby embankment or minimizing the amount of construction labor. This is what I have been saying that the, if the choice of reference plane is there, then uh, we should achieve uh, through this cut and fill analysis a reference surface in which minimum earthwork would be required. That means, wherever uh, even in a say 10 square kilometer area at some places the uh, soil or earth or rocks might, uh, might be required to be removed, but within that uh, area uh, that will be consumed for filling and therefore, no extra material either will go from that area or will come and this, uh, this will uh, provide a complete optimization and uh, can be a very good uh, approach for this. So, this brings to the end of uh, this uh, uh, digital elevation models derivative 2 in which we have discussed uh, topographic profile and applications, cut and fill analysis and uh, uh, bringing time domain as well and uh, its applications. So, thank you very much.